Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we are going to be talking about converging and diverging lenses, which are very similar to mirrors. So if you haven't seen my mirrors video yet, go ahead and watch that. So assuming you know the basics of mirrors, you know there's two kinds of mirrors. You know there's concave mirrors, and then there's convex mirrors. And if you remember, concave mirrors can be used to either make things bigger or make them inverted. And then convex mirrors only make images smaller and keep them upright. And the reason why it's important to know that is because when we start talking about lenses, we need to know that concave mirrors are going to act just like converging lenses. And I'll explain more about that in a second. And then convex mirrors are going to act just like diverging lenses. So what that means, for instance, like when we said concave mirrors, if you remember, we said that they have a positive focal length F. We said that there's three regions that you can actually have. You can have inverted and larger, and remember, inverted means real most of the time. You can have inverted and smaller, and you can have upright and larger. Because the only one that's missing, upright and smaller, that's the convex mirror. And basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cross out the word concave mirror and just replace it with the word converging lens, because the same things are going to be true. Now, one thing I do want to say, and this is going to be the confusing part, converging lenses do have a second name, and I do not like this name. The second name is the convex lens. Now, the reason I don't like that is because convex is not at all the same thing as the convex mirror. As a matter of fact, they're opposites of each other. So then that begs the question, why do we call it a convex lens? I'll show you. It's because here is a convex mirror, that's a rough sketch, and here is a convex lens. You basically put two convex mirrors together, and I'm gonna draw this line down the center, and you've built your convex or converging lens. Now the reason why it behaves like the concave mirror is because let's say I draw my object, so there's my DO, and one thing you should know about the focal length for lenses is that the focal length does show up on both sides of the lens. I'm not sure why. It probably has something to do with the fact that you're putting two of these together. And so what I'm going to do to draw my ray diagrams is I'm going to draw the first line just going forward like this, forward, forward, forward. Stop when I hit that center line, and then I'm going to bend towards the focus like that. Then just keep going. Then the second line I'm going to draw is going to do the opposite. It's going to go through the focus, not the right focus, the left focus, and it's gonna go right through it just like that, hit the mirror, and then it's going to go straight, and where they intersect is where my image will form. As you can see, we got an inverted, which means real image for DI. And actually, it's cool. With the ray diagrams for lenses, there's actually a third line you can draw, and this works, if you draw a line from your tippy top of your object through the very origin of this graph, which is that point right there, and you just keep going, this should perfectly intersect with the other two points. So you don't need the green line because you already got the image from the first two, but this is a good way to confirm you got the right answer because there's actually three lines you can draw. Now here's the probably the most confusing part about lenses. And that's the fact that how we define positives and negatives. So let's just quick remember for mirrors, everything made sense in mirrors, or maybe not everything, but at least this made more sense in mirrors. So regardless if I had a concave or convex lens, this side was always positive and this side was always negative for everything, for the image, for the object, and for the focal length. Now with lenses, it's a lot more confusing, and I don't like it either, but we're going to do it anyway. So on the left side, DO is positive, but on the right side, 
D, I, and F are positive, which means that even though D, I is on the other side of D, O, this is going to be a positive answer right here, which means if you got, let's say an image over here, let's say this is my D, I, well that D, I would be negative because it's on the wrong side where D, I is supposed to be. So that's it for the converging lens. Now let's talk about the diverging lens, which has another name. It's also called the concave lens. And the reason why is because it's like you take two concave mirrors and you put them together like that. Now, if you remember that concave and convex mirrors are opposites of each other, the same is going to be true for the diverging lens. Most notably, F is negative, always. Now, of course, this is confusing for lenses because technically you draw the focus F on both sides, but when it comes to the math, your focal length should always be negative. Now, let's put my DO over here again. There's DO. And once again, let's draw our ray diagrams. So my first ray goes straight just like this and then it needs to bend through the focus. This time we're doing the left focus because it is negative. So it will bend that way through that focal length. And then for the second one, it's going to try and bend through that F, but it doesn't actually make it all the way there because once you hit the center, it's going to bend. So it's heading towards that other focal length, hits the mirror, and then we'll start to go straight. Now, technically it goes straight on both sides because as you can see, it's never going to intersect with the red line. So then you make it also go backwards like that. And where the two lines intersect, which is probably too small, but whatever. Um, let me try drawing that a bit better. So the second ray goes towards F, hits the mirror and then bends that way that's better yeah and where these lines intersect not these lines here because remember you only look at the intersection of the bent line in other words the second line and it is going to be this one right there and that tiny tiny thing is my image which makes sense because the diverging lens just like the convex mirror is only going to produce upright and smaller images However, you'll notice that this DI is negative. And so probably the hardest part with these mirrors is not even the ray diagram, because I get it, this is annoying. But the hardest part really is remembering what's positive and what's negative when it comes to lens being different than a mirror in terms of how we define positives and negatives. Because on this side, DO is positive, and on this side, DI is positive and F is positive. Now you know as well as I do now that the diverging lens, you're never gonna have your image or your focal length on this side. It's going to be on this side, the negative side, because that's what the diverging lens does. And then finally, one thing I'll do for us, I will draw that third ray, the one that just goes straight through the origin, just like that. And you'll see my green line also intersects with the black dot, confirming my answer from before. So that's very good. And now let's just do some math problems and we'll close out the day with that. So first we do have two equations we need to know. The first one is one over F equals one over DO for object plus one over DI for image. And yes, this is the exact same thing as it was for mirrors, so that's nice. The second equation we have also true for the mirror is magnification is equal to negative DI over DO which is also equal to height image over height object. So we just need these two equations and we're gonna be good to go for the math today. Here's the first one. A converging lens is placed in front of an object 30 centimeters away. The focal length of the lens is 50 centimeters. Is the image real or virtual? And what is the image distance? So we can draw a picture of this. I've got my object here, my converging lens there and DO is 30 centimeters away. I don't need to draw the ray diagrams, but I do know the focal length is 50 centimeters, and that is going to be positive, not just because they told me it's positive, 
but more importantly, because converging lens, it's always positive for the focal length. And now I want to find my image. So to do that, I'm just gonna plug in the formula. One over F, which is 50, equals one over DO, which is 30, plus one over DI. Just subtract one over 30 from both sides, and I will get negative 0 0.013 repeating equals one over DI, and then you can just raise it to the negative first power like we did for mirrors. And my answer for the image is going to be negative 75 centimeters. Now the fact that this is negative means two things. Number one, it's a virtual image because virtual will always be a negative image distance. I also know it's going to be upright because it's a virtual image. And I know the image is going to be on the left side and bigger. Why is it on the left side? Well, because this is the negative side for DI. This is DI equals negative 75 centimeters. So I answered the question, it's a virtual image because it's upright and because DI is negative. And we found the image distance, negative 75 centimeters. Perfect. And that's all we needed to do for this one. By the way, in case you're curious, the real life example of this is a magnifying glass. Because when you look through a magnifying glass lens, the object, the ant or blade of grass or whatever, is upright, which is good because I don't want to look at an upside down ant, and it's bigger. So that's the real world example of this lens. Okay, here's another one. A six centimeter tall object is placed in front of a diverging lens with focal length negative 24 centimeters. Because remember, diverging lenses will always have a negative focal length. If the image is upright and has a height of two centimeters, how far away was the object placed? So if I draw a picture of this one, I've got my diverging lens this time. Beautiful. I've got my object somewhere over here. I don't exactly know where it is. But I know that my image is upright and has a height of two centimeters. So as soon as I say it's upright, I know it's a virtual image because it's upright, which means that DI is gonna be negative. And if DI is negative, what side is that on? It's the left side. So now the question is, is it smaller like this or is it gonna be bigger like this for DI? And remember this one in the middle was DO. Well, the reason why I know it's smaller is because DO was six centimeters tall and DI is gonna be two centimeters tall. So that means it's definitely gonna be smaller. So there's my DI, whatever that is. So now if I go to my equation, one over F equals one over DO plus one over DI, well, I get stuck because F is negative 24, which is fine, but I don't know DO and I don't know DI. Because remember, I gave us height of the object and height of the image, which means I'm probably gonna use my magnification equation which is magnification equals height image over height object. Now I could also use negative DI over DO, and I will do that because I want to set the two equal to each other. And here's why. Height image was two, and that is a positive two because it's upright. If it was inverted, it would be negative. And then height object is six, that equals negative DI over DO, I get to solve for whatever I want. I'm gonna solve for DI instead of DO, and you'll see why by the end of the problem. So to solve, I cross multiply here. So two times DO is just two DO equals negative six DI. Divide both sides by negative six, and I will get negative one third DO equals DI. And now I'm going to plug that back into my focal length equation. So when I do that, I get 1 over negative 24 equals 1 over DO plus 1 over, this is where I substitute in for DI, and I put negative 1 third DO. And now you'll notice this is good because I only have one unknown variable. It's DO. And it's the one I want to solve for too. I want to solve for DO, which is why I solved for DI first. That was my strategy. So now in terms of solving this, before I divide anything over, I'm just gonna rewrite this slightly. I'm gonna write one over negative 24 equals one over DO plus, well, really minus. And that's going to be minus 
3 over DO. Now you may be wondering how is this possible? Well it's because this is a fraction in the denominator so I know it's just going to go in the numerator. That's our properties of fractions that you should probably know already. So now I need to combine 1 over DO minus 3 over DO. And since they have the same denominator, it means I can just subtract them like right now. 1 minus 3 is negative 2 over DO. Don't subtract the denominators, that'd be horribly wrong. And now I have this. Now I just cross multiply again. And DO is going to be positive 48 centimeters. And that is where the object is, which is what I wanted to solve for. And that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully now you have a better understanding on converging and diverging lenses. And don't forget that mirrors are still important and very challenging. So if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care and bye-bye.